My daughter said. Mom seems to have been in an accident. Dad, come home quickly. My daughter's voice, mixed with background noise, sounded distant. Of course, it was just a recorded voice from a voice recorder. Despite being on a business trip, my husband hadn't even prepared his bag. So, I secretly stashed a voice recorder along with his change of clothes and daily necessities. I hid it in my pocket to ensure he wouldn't find it even if he searched the bag. My husband was maybe sitting near the discarded bag. The audio quality of our daughter's voice made it hard to tell. But his words came through crystal clear. Why do I have to come back? It's not like that useless wife matters. She could die for all I care. I felt a cold sweat break out, and I gently covered my mouth. I was on the verge of screaming. His voice was detached, devoid of any emotion. Our marital relationship was already strained, and my relationship with our daughter wasn't much better. But I never imagined he'd wish for my accidental death. When my husband returned from his business trip, he likely thought he was coming back to an empty house. Perhaps he assumed I had died in the accident, leaving only our daughter at home. That's why his face turned pale when he saw me playing the voice recorder. His trembling reaction amused me. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. My name is Sophie. I'm a 45-year-old homemaker. My husband, Lyle, is 48 and currently works in an IT company. We met 19 years ago through a mutual acquaintance. Our connection was instant, and after dating for a year, we got married. The following year, I became pregnant. Our daughter, Bonnie, was born when I was 28. We decided to cherish her and named her Bonnie. She was adorable, but Lyle seemed even more smitten with her than I was. Isn't it risky to be so smitten? What if Bonnie brings home a boyfriend? Hey, Bonnie is still a baby. Don't talk about boyfriends. Well, you never know. She might bring one home sooner than you think. No way. I won't allow it. Our family of three enjoyed blissful days together. However, relying solely on Lyle's salary became challenging for our livelihood. As a homemaker, I started working from home, juggling household chores and childcare. As part of this, I delved into stock market studies and managed to make modest profits. Initially, I fell for claims like recommended for beginners or anyone can earn, only to learn the hard way that such promises rarely hold true. Yet, with diligent learning and effort, I discovered that investing in stocks wasn't inherently irrational. I limited my investments to an amount that wouldn't impact our household finances significantly avoiding the pursuit of overnight riches. Still, I managed to contribute a little to our budget through stock dividends and occasional sales. However, no matter how much I worked or invested, our savings remained stagnant. Oddly enough, there were even months when we operated at a deficit. The reason behind this financial struggle was our high school sophomore daughter, Bonnie. On Wednesday evening, I eagerly awaited Bonnie's return, having noticed something troubling. When I heard the familiar sound of the front door around the expected time, I rushed to confront her. I showed her the credit card bill that had arrived on my smartphone. Hey, Bonnie! Did you spend money on online games again? And buying new clothes too? I give you an allowance, manage within that range. As the month end approached, I opened the credit card app to review the expenses before transferring the funds to the bank. 
To my shock, there were several unfamiliar charges, totaling over $1,000. Each one was related to in-game purchases or clothing stores I never frequented. Since these expenses were charged to Lyle's card, I initially suspected infidelity. However, Lyle rarely played games, and when I found clothes in Bonnie's room from the same stores listed in the statements, I knew the culprit. This is unacceptable. Spending this much again. This wasn't the first time Bonnie had overspent. She'd had a smartphone since fourth grade, initially for communication purposes. But by middle school, she became obsessed with online games. When she first asked if she could spend money on these games, I told her it was acceptable within her allowance. However, Bonnie gradually became more engrossed, secretly making in-game purchases without my knowledge. I told you, didn't I? If you ever spend money on games without permission again, I'll take away your phone for good. I said that, and Bonnie shouted angrily. Shut up, you old hag. You don't even work, so don't talk to me about money. What did you say? This card is dad's, you know? I'm using dad's money. Don't act so high and mighty, you jobless hag. Bonnie stood up and pushed my right shoulder hard. I fell on my butt and she looked down at me with cold eyes. It's the worst to hear the old hags yelling as soon as I come home. Ugh. I hate coming back to this house. Why don't you just disappear? Bonnie grabbed her bag and kicked my leg. She stomped up to her room on the second floor. I sighed deeply in the empty entrance hall. Bonnie wasn't always like this. She used to be aware of how wrong it was to use her parents' money without telling them. She even checked with me how much she could spend with her allowance. But since she entered the first year of middle school, she gradually started to treat me with this arrogant attitude. Puberty and rebelliousness are not cute at all. The cause is Lyle. The day I first found out that Bonnie had secretly spent a lot of money on online games, I asked Lyle, who had just come back from work, to talk to her. He sighed softly and said, It's fine, isn't it? If Bonnie wanted to buy something, just let her buy it. You said it yourself. You don't want Bonnie to have a hard time. Was that just lip service? I do feel that way. But it's different to spend thousands of dollars without telling her parents. That's a month's worth of food. What? You don't love Bonnie? I love her and care for her. That's why I have to teach her how to use money properly. Right. As I tried to continue my argument, Lyle clicked his tongue and said, Stop it. I'm tired from work, you know. It's exhausting to hear you nagging. She used the phone payment, right? Then it's my money, so just shut up. I'm going to take a bath first, so get the meal ready. Lyle didn't scold Bonnie at all. He just despised me for being cold. I tried to have a discussion with both Lyle and Bonnie several times after that, but Lyle always said, it's my money, so it's fine. He didn't even pretend to discipline Bonnie. Of course, Bonnie became attached to Lyle, who spoiled her and cuddled up to him with a sweet voice. On the contrary, I got more and more unacceptable behavior from her, even considering her puberty and rebelliousness. But Lyle knew that if Bonnie kept spending money recklessly, it would naturally strain our finances. He blamed me for the cause. Do you have any idea how lucky you are to be a housewife thanks to me? 
work a little and contribute to the household. Lyle said that I was the reason our finances were tight because I didn't work. Even though I showed him the statement in front of him, proving that I made over $1,000 this month from working at home and investing in stocks, he treated me like a money grubber. And he relied on my income from working at home and other sources. Yet, he dumped all the household chores on me, claiming that I was a housewife because I stayed at home. He gradually started to order me around in a curt and commanding tone. Of course, Bonnie treated me like a housekeeper too. I used to say, I'm not a housekeeper, to the two of them, but nothing changed. I was exhausted and decided that I couldn't stay in this house any longer. I started to plan my next move. One night, after months of living like this, I found a receipt for a brand name bag that Lyle had bought. I thought Bonnie had used it again, but I couldn't find the bag anywhere in the house. While he was in the bath, his phone notified me of something and I realized everything. So you bought this person a brand name bag. You tell me to save money, but you spend as much as you want on some other woman. When I looked at Lyle's phone, there was a message with a lot of heart marks on the screen. It said that she received the brand name bag, thanked him, and asked him to book a hotel somewhere. The content was too obvious, and I could only sigh. Don't look at other people's phones without permission. You're a creepy woman. You're the creepy one for cheating on me. Lyle didn't admit to cheating but he couldn't deny it when he saw the blatant message. He yelled at me with harsh words. That caused a huge commotion, and Bonnie came down from the second floor. Hey, can you be quiet? Bonnie's scowling eyes were only directed at me. She must have heard our conversation on her way down the stairs, but her cold gaze still pierced me. It's not cheating. It's a natural consequence. Dad works hard every day, and when he comes home, he has to listen to the old hag who stays at home all day. Instead of getting angry that he cheated, why don't you reflect on yourself a little? Bonnie snorted with a disgusted look and leaned on Lyle's side, wrapping her arm around him. Knowing that Bonnie was on his side, Lal got cocky and started to insult me as a greedy and money-hungry old hag. I ran out of the room and locked myself in my bedroom. I buried my face in the bed and the tears I couldn't hold back poured out. I was planning to leave after preparing a little more, but I had reached my limit. I rubbed my red eyes and reached for the drawer. The next day, Lyle left the house saying he was going on a business trip. He must have expected me to resist, because he harshly silenced me with strong words. I didn't argue at all, I just quietly prepared everything for his trip. Lyle looked at me as if he was surprised. That's good, just obey and I'll let you stay in the house. He left in a good mood, and I didn't say a word to him or Bonnie, who was heading to school. In the evening, the front door opened. I thought it was Bonnie by the time, but I clearly heard someone talking. I wondered if we had a guest, and when I went to the entrance, I saw Bonnie and a woman I didn't know. What are you doing, old hag? Oh, mom. Don't mind her, come in. Dad is not here, he's on a business trip. I know. Oh, right. Of course you do. Bonnie and the unfamiliar woman were talking friendly. From the same mouth that called me an old hag, she called the unfamiliar woman mom. That alone told me who this woman was. Huh? Is the housekeeper unable to speak? She doesn't even greet the guest. 
What a terrible wife. Just like I heard. When I just stood there silently, the woman and Bonnie openly laughed at me. Old hag is gross. She's annoying when she talks and creepy when she's silent. And what's with those eyes? Is it so bad that I love mom? Bonnie interpreted my silent attitude as she pleased and repeated the insults. The woman gently hugged Bonnie's shoulder and smiled. See, Bonnie is not wrong, right? By the way, I'm Wilma, Lyles Jr. at work. Unlike you, I can at least greet you properly. Wilma introduced herself to me on purpose. But nothing resonated with me now. All that remained was the fact that Bonnie and a woman I didn't know were there. Hey, say something. Can this person really not speak? As I continued to stare silently, the two glared at me and started to curse me as they pleased. I just listened and stared for a few minutes. Hey, mom, let's leave this old hag and go have fun. Yeah, Bonnie. Let's eat out today. Maybe because I was standing in front of the door that led to the living room, the two seemed reluctant to push through. They got along well, saying let's go there, let's eat that, and laughing happily. When they closed the front door, Wilma looked at me with a triumphant face. Bonnie frowned as if she found me creepy and slammed the door as she left. I finally let out a sigh of relief. Bonnie's arrival delayed my departure time, but it was better than letting them into the house. I had hidden a bag in the living room with everything I needed to leave this house. I checked the contents and packed them into a suitcase in my room when it happened. My phone, which hadn't rung for a long time, rang. It was set to ring only for Bonnie, and it hadn't rung for years. I remembered setting it to this song, and the phone didn't seem to stop ringing. After staring at it for a minute or two, the call finally ended, but it rang again right away. I pressed the answer button and heard a shrill voice in my ear. Hey! Call Dad and tell him that Mom is in trouble! He hung up on me. I just hung up the phone silently. The phone rang again from Bonnie. I turned off the power to make it quiet, and the room was silent. After about five minutes, I turned on the phone and there were dozens of missed calls. She must have been calling and hanging up over and over in that short time. She must have given up, because my phone didn't ring anymore. I needed to finish the last touch. I sent an email to each of my family and Lyle's relatives. The next evening. Lyle came home in a better mood than usual. He greeted the second floor with a bright voice. I'm home. But what greeted him was the sound of rough footsteps and Bonnie's sobbing voice. You idiot, dad. Why did you ignore my phone call? Lyle's eyes widened as he heard Bonnie's voice screaming in tears. Dad, it's terrible. Mom got into a car accident and she's in a critical condition. Come to the hospital right now. It was Bonnie's voice. Bonnie in front of Lyle couldn't speak properly because she was crying. Lyle's eyes finally met mine at the door to the living room. Ha! Huh? No way, I don't care if that wife dies. Lyle turned pale and trembled. I handed him the voice recorder silently, and he realized that it was a recording of the conversation. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. I spoke to Lyle for the first time in a long time and he gasped briefly. But Lyle's scream wasn't because of me. 
He saw my parents and in-laws behind me, filled with anger. It goes without saying, but I wasn't involved in any car accident while I was at home. As Bonnie called mom, the one who got into the accident was Wilma, his cheating partner. Last night, when I went to pick them up at the hospital, Bonnie, who had tears all over her face, jumped at me. Mom is in trouble. Hey, why did you ignore my phone call? Call dad. Even though Bonnie was crying in front of me, I didn't feel anything. I just listened to her complaints silently. Apparently, Bonnie and Wilma left the house and headed to the downtown area. They walked casually while looking at their phones and entered a red light. Luckily, the car in front of them stopped, but a motorcycle came out from behind and hit Wilma. Wilma flew away and lost consciousness, and an ambulance was called right away because there were many witnesses. Fortunately, they were taken quickly and Bonnie was able to ride with them, but Bonnie and Wilma are strangers now. Wilma was barely alive when it was already late at night. In the meantime, Bonnie was questioned, and since she had no blood relation to Wilma, they contacted me as her guardian and I went to pick her up. After bringing her home, Bonnie cried in her room all the time. What? Wilma! After hearing the gist of what happened, Lyle's first concern was Wilma. You idiot! He tackled Lyle from the living room. Lyle groaned pitifully, but only trembled. You, you are all shameless. Unbelievable! You cheated on your wife and said you don't care if she dies. Lyle was overwhelmed by his father-in-law's fury and only repeated, but, but, what if? I was disgusted by how small he was and showed him some photos. These are the proof photos of you and Wilma cheating. I also have screenshots and videos of your messages and I will use them to claim damages from you and Wilma. Of course, I will also divorce you. What? You, Wilma is in a critical condition right now. You are a devil for asking for damages. The devil is you. You hurt our Sophie, you selfish bastard. When I demanded a divorce, Lyle turned red and yelled at me. But he soon screamed and apologized under my father's pressure. Let's talk to a lawyer about the property division and custody. I'll tell you in advance, I don't want custody. You raise her. Huh? I heard a dumbfounded voice. Bonnie looked up at me with her mouth open. So, so I can live with dad and mom from now on. That depends on him and Wilma. My words made Bonnie overjoyed and she clung to Lyle's hand. My parents and in-laws looked down at them with indescribable expressions. Of course, I'll support Wilma. You cold-hearted woman, I'll divorce you right away. Bonnie sided with him and Lyle pointed at me. My father-in-law stepped in and apologized to me. Sophie, I'm truly sorry for what he did. Thank you for taking care of this foolish son of mine. Hey, Dad! What are you apologizing for? Don't call me Dad. I'll cut off all ties with you today. And Bonnie, you don't intend to apologize to Sophie, do you? Why do I have to apologize? My father-in-law clenched his teeth and sighed deeply. My mother-in-law gently stroked his shoulder. Then, we'll lose our son and granddaughter. Goodbye, you too. Take care. Huh? Grandma, what are you saying? Seeing them like that, my parents nodded to each other. 
We don't want to see your face again either. Bonnie, live well. We don't have grandchildren anymore. Grandpa! At my father's words, Bonnie looked at him with a puzzled look. Without apologizing, Lyle took Bonnie and ran to the hospital where Wilma was. After that, I sued Lyle and Wilma for $30,000 each in damages. Wilma hired a lawyer and the amount was reduced, but I was glad to get anything. Wilma survived, but she was left with a serious disability in her lower body. It was her fault for walking with her phone and entering a red light. The motorcyclist was furious. Wilma insisted that the vehicle was always at fault in a car and pedestrian accident, so the negotiations were difficult. It was hard for her to work as before, and she had to deal with the motorcyclist and the damages to me. She would want to reduce the costs as much as possible. On top of that, the three of them broke up soon after they started living together. Lyle was desperate for work because he had to support the household. Bonnie had to study because she was preparing for college entrance exams. Wilma couldn't do anything without someone's help, so she had no choice but to rely on them. They all got stressed out and Lyle and Bonnie had a big fight. How do you think we can live if I don't earn money? Hire a helper or something and take care of her at night. She's your wife. You should look after her. The money kept decreasing and the relationship got worse day by day, and finally Lyle and Bonnie ran away leaving Wilma alone. There was no one to take care of her, so she was able to receive public services preferentially, but her life changed drastically from being pampered. Wilma found out that Lyle and Bonnie betrayed her and started to follow them around in a wheelchair. It's your fault that I became like this. Do something about it. I shouldn't have gotten involved with you and been sued for damages. Wilma didn't just yell outside the house, but appeared in front of them anywhere. She also barged into the company where Lyle worked with her wheelchair and ambushed Bonnie in front of her school. Lyle and Bonnie became the talk of the neighborhood and Lyle finally quit his job. Bonnie was living a lonely high school life. Lyle quit his job and lost his income source, and Lyle and Bonnie were in trouble. Why did you quit your job? Go work. What did you say? If you say that, why don't you do a part-time job or something? Lyle and Bonnie blamed each other here too. And Lyle couldn't find his next job easily so Bonnie's college expenses were doubtful. They got sick of the daily hardships and moved to a place where Wilma couldn't find them and started to live a poor life. But in just a few weeks, Lyle and Bonnie couldn't stand the poverty and came to me. They told me their situation in tears, but I didn't feel anything. But when I was silent, Bonnie got heated up. She glared at me, it's your fault that I became like this. If you didn't complain about me spending money on online games and clothes, this wouldn't have happened. It's the parents' responsibility to raise their children, right? If you had raised me properly, I wouldn't have turned out like this. What? Instead of apologizing, Bonnie vented her anger at me. Doesn't she ever reflect on what she has done? And then Bonnie threw a shocking line at me. I wish you had been in an accident. You owe me money for ruining my new family. I felt like my brain was shaking from the shock. I worked from home and studied stocks to make ends meet, and I always saved money by giving up what I wanted to buy and do, and I cooked and cleaned no matter how tired I was. I regretted that all the time I had devoted to these people was a waste. I closed the front door. 
Lyle put his finger on the door and tried to force his way in. Give me money and I'll leave. You're still doing that clicky thing, right? Give me the money you earned from that. That's right. If you're making money from stocks while living with your parents, you must have a lot of money. And living with your parents, what a good deal you have. I heard their words and felt something snap inside me. Get out. Get out of here. Don't show your face. I'll call the police. I said in a trembling voice, but firmly. They must have been surprised by my comeback. Lal tried to calm me down with a sweet voice. Hey! Sophie, I'm sorry. I was wrong. So, give me some money. Police. Damn! What the hell? Annoying! It's your fault! Lyle and Bonnie cursed and left. In the end, they were only after money and left as soon as they were intimidated. Bonnie never apologized to me. I had no feelings for them left. Two weeks later, I started going to mental care at the suggestion of my parents. It might not have been like this if it was just Lyle, but the shock of being betrayed by Bonnie as well left a deep wound in my heart. You hardly talk, do you? You might not be able to talk, not just not talking. You should see a doctor. I was skeptical when I heard my dad's advice, but when I actually went to the hospital, I realized how much I had been pushed to the edge. I digested what had happened then, and I started to feel more positive. My mom made my favorite food for me, and my dad bought me things I liked. Their kindness also wrapped my wounded heart. Now, I'm trying to rebuild my second life in this warm home that raised me. How did you like this story? Please also subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.